presence here, however you're coming today, um, and whatever you're bringing with you, um, and grateful for those online as well. Uh, today is the third Sunday in the season of Lent, these 40 days of walking alongside Jesus to the cross. Um, it's a period of time that is just long enough to interrupt us, um, stop us in our tracks, call us again and again to step out into our faith. And in our text today, Jesus meets a Samaritan woman at the well, and we hear this beautiful, rich story of her openness and her attention to what is possible in faith. Speaking of callings, I wanted to recognize Blake Prohl um, this morning, who just had his one-year anniversary here with us at Mount Olivet. Blake, your community is so grateful for your calling um, and your special gifts in the world and how you share them with us Sunday after Sunday. So just a recognition of Blake. Um, and we also have a special uh, word today from Laura Harding. Um, so thankful that you're here. Um, and she has a word for us about um, how she is feeling called. Um, in this season. So thanks for coming and sharing with us. So now let us move from how we arrived here this morning uh, to being in God's presence with one another. Please stand in body or in spirit and join in our time of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who walks alongside us these 40 days and sustains us with the gift of grace. Amen. Let us acknowledge before God and one another our need for repentance and God's mercy. I pause now for personal reflection. Holy God, we confess to you our faults and failings. Too often we neglect and do not trust your holy word. We take for ourselves instead of giving to others. We spoil rather than steward your creation. We cause hurt though you call us to heal. We choose fear over compassion. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us as we seek to follow in your way of life. Amen. Hear the good news. God so loved the world that God gave us Jesus so that all may receive life. This promise is for you. God embraces you in mercy, forgives you in Christ's name, renews you in the Spirit's power. Amen.
We pray together. Gracious God, you go before us and await our coming. Our thirst compels us beyond complaint to conversation, beyond rejection to relationship. Pour your love into our hearts that refreshed and renewed, we may invite others to the living water given to us in Jesus. Amen. Today's reading is from John chapter 4. Jesus came to the Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired by, out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying it to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob? who gave us the well, and with his sons and flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, 
Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where the people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers that will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then his disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman, but no one said, What do you want, or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, Come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Surely no one has brought him something to eat? Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. Do not say, Four months more, then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around you and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life, so that sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you do not labor. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from the, that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for what we have heard for ourselves and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. Word of God, word of life. Thanks to Joni for that very long reading. Good morning. Last summer, my family and I made a maiden voyage to Holden Village. Some of you have been there yourselves, perhaps. And for those of you who are unfamiliar, Holden Village is a remote wilderness community in the North Cascade Mountains in the state of Washington. Getting there is not for the faint of heart. Last year, our itinerary had us flying out of the city uh, 
flying into Seattle, rather, renting a car, making a four-hour trek out of the city, staying in a um, hotel overnight, getting ourselves to a ferry that would take us on a three-hour ride up the lake, followed by a bumpy ride in a school bus up the mountain to our final destination. Like I said, getting to Holden Village is not for the faint of heart, but once you get there and you begin to take part in the sacred daily rhythms of shared meals, lectures, art classes, hiking, and worship, time slows way down. One of the most unexpected gifts of our time there last summer was developing a friendship with a retired pastor and her partner who were staying at Holden at the same time. And oddly enough, when we got back in touch with them about returning this summer, they suggested that my whole family come out and stay at their home in Seattle for a few days beforehand beforehand and then caravan to the ferry together in their two cars so we had some more time to be together. What a gracious gift, so gracious in fact that it made no sense. Two questions popped into my mind. Number one, who invites a family that they are just getting to know into their home to stay a while? This family also includes two squirrely tweens, mind you. And number two, how could the plan they hatched to host us and then drive our whole family back across the state possibly be efficient? We have this habit in our culture, one to which I am not immune, of applying a sense of urgency to everything we do, including vacations. As Bio Akumalafi of the Emergence Network writes about white culture, we are ruled by time, by deadlines, by needing to do things, to control things based on arbitrary schedules, that have little to do with the realities of how long things take, particularly when those things are relationships with others. How long does it take to form a relationship with Jesus, I wonder? How long does it take to drink of that living water that we heard about this morning? Here we are at the well, and Jesus, you will notice, does not seem to be about urgency or efficiency at all. See, we get used to abbreviated stories and dialogue from Jesus as we move through the gospel week after week, but the pace of this story slows way, way down. Believe it or not, this is the longest conversation Jesus has with any individual in all of the Gospels. And it is a nameless woman from Samaria. I guess you could call it a conversation, but to me it seems more like a dance. Because there are moments when Jesus is leading and moments where the woman is leading and each are giving and taking in what feels like slow motion. In contrast to so many stories in the Bible, every last detail of this exchange is attended to. And so as Joni read, unraveling the many verses of this story, did you notice the small movements of increasing recognition on the part of the woman? How her openness to conversation made way to grace, how her shame was traded for belonging, how a drink of water revealed living water, how her responsiveness to possibility becomes a witness to Christ and then a whole community's witness, all in God's time and at a pace 
that the woman and the whole world could handle. Even Jesus' travel itinerary points to the slow, intentional pace of God working in the world through relationship. Jesus was on his way back to Galilee from Jerusalem, and instead of taking the road most often traveled by Jews, crossing over the Jordan River and up the other side to Galilee to avoid conflict with Samaritans, Jesus goes his own way. He goes directly into the heart of Samaria. He has plans, and these plans make no sense to anyone but himself for revealing the promise of John 3.16, the very promise we read in church last week, that God so loved the world that God gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. In my mind, I imagine the disciples, right, trying to assume control of the travel itinerary, pleading with Jesus to take a safer, more sensical route to their destination, But Jesus had someone special to meet at a very specific well in the brutal heat of midday, a woman who up until experiencing the depth of Jesus' attention probably never imagined herself as whole and deserving of God's love. Who could have predicted this long, slow chain of events that culminates in the woman telling her story, witnessing to the healing power of Jesus to an entire community. Above all, trust in the slow work of God, goes the prayer of Teilhard de Chardin. We are quite naturally impatient in everything to reach the end without delay. We should like to skip the intermediate stages. We are impatient of being on the way to something unknown. But only God can say what the Spirit gradually forming within you will be. In a little while, we will hear from Laura Harding, mother, daughter, wife, musician, teacher, leader, and how the Spirit has been working in her life and forming her and her sense of call. I'm reminded by our text today that the woman's story did not end at the well, but continued on through her witness to a community of people, and then on as their witness continued to their communities, and on and on the story continues God's story lives and breathes one relationship, one story at a time. And Laura, your story is part of God's story among us gathered here today. So thank you. In case you were wondering, my family's going to make the long trip to Holden Village again this summer. And this time, instead of trying to get there as quickly as possible, Much like our high schoolers who are going out to Montana, my family will be taking the long train ride to Seattle. I wonder what sights we will see, what people we will will meet along the way, and what stories we will have to tell about the living water. Thanks be to God who meets us at the right time, at the right place, and at a pace that we can handle. Amen.
Now the peace of God be with you all. Please offer a sign of God's love and peace to those around you. We continue now with our offering. We are uh, so very grateful for all the ways you support the mission and vision we have here at Mount Olivet. Your financial donations can go in the basket up front or um, in the box at the welcome counter. We pray over our offering, God of good gifts. 
receive these and all our offerings as we present them in faithful service for the sake of your gospel. Prepare our hearts to receive you as you pour out your very presence through Christ Jesus, the source of life. Amen. The Lord be with you. your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you almighty and merciful god through our savior jesus christ you call your people to cleanse their heart and prepare with joy for the paschal feast that renewed in the gift of baptism we may come to the fullness of your grace and so with all the choirs of angels with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven we praise your name and join their unending hymn <laughs> The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray now as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In this meal, we trust that Jesus shows up, and we know that when Jesus shows up here, there's forgiveness and new birth and new life and living water. So however you're coming today, however your heart feels today, open your hands and receive this gift given for you. Just a reminder, ushers will guide us uh, forward. Wafers are gluten-free. Wine in the cups is dark in color and juice is light. And if you are online, the body of Christ is given for you and the blood of Christ is shed for you. Come now, for all has been prepared.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Well, we have heard the word and we've been forgiven and fed, and so let us lift our hearts in faith, in prayer to the one who hears us and holds close all those um, in need. So I'll begin with this short prayer this morning and then ask you to raise your hand. Um, and I will try to get to prayers online as well. I am not as good on Facebook as my colleague, but I will try. All right, let's pray. God, uh, you meet us at all the wells um, when we're lonely, when we are feeling forgotten, when we're hurt, um, when we're grieving. Um, and just give us that drink, um, that living water. Help us trust um, and be patient um, and to trust in your slow work um, and the grace that brings us to life again. Uh, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. What are your prayers this morning? Yes, Barb. Yes, so Angela um, came down with COVID. Um, I trust that she's recovering, uh, moving through the symptoms, but God, uh, give her patience in her healing um, and um, heal her body. Um, and we do miss her here. And so, Angela, if you are watching, um, God, we, um, we ask that uh, Angela be um, healed as soon as possible and back to Mount Olivet. God, in your mercy. I have a prayer for you. Um, John Ruha, um, some of you know him, uh, and his daughter Tammy, who usually sit right up there, uh, passed away last week. Um, and uh, uh, so we just... Uh, pray for God's closeness to that family as they remember John um, and as they prepare for his funeral, which will be next Thursday, uh, March 16th at 11 o'clock here. Um, and we also pray for Jenny Grill, um, who's a member of the choir whose mom passed away on Wednesday. Um, and so Jenny is out with her whole family in North Dakota. Um, um, having some sacred time with her family and also planning the funeral. So prayers for her and also continued prayers for Pastor Beth and her mom um, and her whole family. God, in your mercy. Okay, I will check online. This should be interesting. Oh, you have it, yay. Who is? Okay, yes. Uh, prayers for Pastor Beth and her family. Yep, yep. Okay. Uh, thanks for that um, prayer, God, uh, for all the ways that you show up um, in our lives and for how uh, you hear us when we pray. Um, shape us and shape the world uh, by your mercy and grace. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, uh, just a few announcements this morning, but before announcements, we're going to hear from Laura. So welcome up, Laura. Thank you, Pastor Kristen. Um, back in the spring of 2021, I was finishing my second year as treasurer of Minnesota Music Teachers Association. My time in this position had been during the start of the pandemic when our organization had to quickly shift from operating to operating remotely. I enjoyed my work but had decided that I wanted to continue on the board directors in another role, maybe VP of marketing. It felt both fun and safe at the same time. Then I received an email from the president-elect at the time asking if I would consider the role as the next president-elect. This role would mean two years as president-elect, two years as president, and then two more years as immediate past president. 
I was honored and also surprised, as I hadn't considered it at that time for myself. And at a six-year commitment, especially with two young children, it felt like a lot. I let her know that I would give it some thought and get back to her. That same week, I went to Pastor Joel's last service at Mount Olivet. I remember very clearly members gathering in the parking lot, bringing their own lawn chairs, spreading out, and wearing masks. It had been quite some time since we had all been together in one place, many of us having worshipped only online for over a year. It had a feeling of community and a feeling of belonging. And something happened when Pastor Joel gave his last sermon. I felt called to say yes to accepting the position. I heard a voice in my say, this is where you need to be. And thinking back, I can't name specifically what it was, just that I had this feeling of, yes, I need to do this, it's time. Fast forward two years later, and I'm coming to the end of my two-year term as president-elect. I will become president July 1st, and it feels big and scary, but I also feel honored and called to do this work. I've grown so much these last two years, and I've learned to be curious, to ask questions, to dig into the work, and most importantly, to listen. One of my main goals in this role is connection, and it's something I find very important after we have been isolated for so long. We have approximately 600 members in our association, and that spans six generations. Our backgrounds are wide and varied, and we cover many areas of the state, both urban and rural. However, we're all connected because of music and because of the students that we teach. This past year, I've invited new members into my home for coffee. Blake is actually one of them. <laughs> um, or via Zoom to simply get to know one another to create a community. Last Thursday, I visited a local association in Rochester. And by May, I will have connected with all 12 of the local associations that span the state. I have learned to put myself out there, to ask questions, to be present, to be curious, and to listen. I realized in this process that it's not about having all of the answers. It's simply about connecting with the members and listening to their stories and meeting them where they're at. And Mount Olivet has played a huge role in this calling and has helped me guide, guide me as a leader. I actually find myself taking notes at every service, and I have my very own uh, Google Doc that's called Inspiration for Mount Olivet. So I've figured out how to translate these things into the leadership role. This June, I'll be giving a presentation at our state convention titled Threads of Human Connection. I'll be talking about the importance of true human connection and how it helps support our membership in work that can often feel isolated. When Pastor Beth asked if I would share my story this Lent, I went back and listened to Pastor Joel's last sermon at Mount Olivet. He talked about how being present, listening, and storytelling are enough, that there is abundant life in unexpected places. Pastor Joel also talked about there being uncertainty and vulnerability on the journey and about life rising in an unexpected place. I see now how showing up and listening and being present are enough, how the road ahead may be uncertain and yet it is abundant. Thank you again, Mount Olivet, for being a beacon of human connection, and to Pastor Beth and Pastor Kristen for your continued messages of hope, love, and community. I'm grateful. To everyone, listen to your call. It may come at an unexpected, uncertain time in your life. Thank you. Thank you so much, Laura. That was so meaningful. Um, okay, just a few announcements. Uh, youth stock. There are a bunch of kids out there at the table. Help them raise the money they need to go out on the train that I talked about to Montana this summer. Their goal is ambitious, tw over $12,000, and I think we're at four now. So if you, if you can help, please do. Um, Minnesota Food Share Month, that's March. These are tags in the back. It um, will tell you exactly what is needed most and what you can uh, bring back to church. So if you're 
feel called in that direction, that's an opportunity as well. And then after, uh, immediately following this service, um, if you are interested in dwelling in that rich text, um, uh, The Woman at the Well, with me a little longer, please uh, grab your coffee and then join me in the conference room, okay? And now, uh, please rise for our ascending hymn. receive this blessing. God, the giver of love, Christ, the resurrection and the life and the Holy Spirit of rebirth, call us again and again. Amen. Go in peace, serve in love. Thanks Thanks be to God. Thank you.